Okay, so themes of .NET 6 that you're going to care about for your team. Um, it, it, one, of the, one of the themes is simplified development. And so um, one of those aspects starts with the command line interface. Um, there's getting started and doing more with the command line interface has been a focus. There's more templates available right there um, from the CLI. Uh, you can do hot reload via uh, .NET space watch. And that means you spend, of course, less time building and, and uh, stopping, changing code, starting the code again, um, and more time coding. And um, if you are one of the people that is uh, has an interest to run on Apple Silicon, that's ARM64, then um, .NET 6 is the first release that natively supports Apple Silicon. And, uh, and of course, it, it already supports Windows ARM64 as well. And then, and then there's another capability that is kind of, uh, kind, of, kind of hidden, not really talked about, but there is extraction-free single file apps. And that works for Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. Um, and if you've tried it before and it didn't quite work, try it again because they fixed it. Uh, when we mean extraction-free single file apps, let me paint the picture. For the longest time, well, uh, if you're if you're old enough to remember, in the 90s or even 2001, before .NET came out, uh, Visual Studio development was either C++ or Visual Basic. And with any of them, you did a build and you could build everything into a single exe file. And when you ran the software, it was a single exe file, or if it was a C++ web application behind a CGI web server, it was a DLL file. But either way, it was a single file. When .NET Framework came out, your application was a directory of files. And it has been a directory of files. You have a exe, and then you have just a ton of other DLLs. And even with, uh, with .NET 6, the default is you have this directory of the ex the exe is your entry point, and then you have another DLL for every one of your Visual Studio projects, and a DLL for every one of the libraries that you have a dependency on. Well, for distribution to customers, it's a lot of especially especially native apps, and you see a lot of web applications being paired with a little tiny native system tray application that kind of does a little bit of native stuff, but then everything else is on the server. That's pretty darn common when you need just a little bit of native integration. And of course, when you have something running in the system tray, you can use the Windows Action Center to send notifications that are native on the desktop and you can have access to everything on the machine according to the local Windows uh, security profile. But um, you don't wanna distribute to regular users this big old directory of tons of, tons of files um, especially if it's a, a simple tool, when you can give them a single EXE. The first go with the single EXE um, didn't quite work properly because when you executed it behind the scenes, it basically extracted the whole directory into some directory deep in the bowels of your hard drive and you really didn't know where it was. And so then you had to do a lot of work to figure out where it was running from. And because of that, it didn't load any config files that you ha might have next to the exe because now it's running in a different directory and it was basically just a self-extracting zip file. They fixed that. Now your application literally runs from that directory where the single exe is there. So that's kind of, uh, that's kind of exciting because the first go at it didn't quite hit the mark and they fixed it now. 